Welcome to Embedded System Lecture Series. In this video, I'll be going to explain you types of processor. Before we go for understanding of types of processor, one should know what are the units which is there with processor. See, processor is having basically two different units. One is program flow control unit. In short, it is also referred as CU. And second is execution unit. See program flow control unit that is having different operations to be performed with processor. Like there can be pipelining operation where different segments of instructions are executed in sequence. Right. It includes fetch unit. See, every instruction is having opcode fetch that defines which instruction to get executed by processor. So that is there in program flow control unit or even there can be pipelining operation that will be well defined by program flow control unit. While when we talk about execution unit, it is used to execute different tasks like it includes arithmetic logic unit as well as different circuits which is executing different tasks. So processor is having basically two different units. One is program flow control unit that is identifying the flow of execution of instructions and execution unit that will be identifying how execution will happen. So execution that will be happening as per arithmetic and logic unit and that flow of execution that will be defined by program flow control unit. Now I'll explain you different types of processor. So classification of processor that is what the case which we are delivered to have. So first one is general purpose processor. Second is application specific system processor. In short it is also referred as ASSP. Third is application specific instruction processor. It is also referred as ASIP. And fourth is general purpose processor core or one can say application specific instruction processor core. Now here general purpose processor that is again further subclassified in microprocessor microcontroller, embedded processor, digital signal processor and media processor. Now all this processor that I will be going to explain you in great detail one by one. So let us see first what is general purpose processor. So when we talk about general purpose processor one should understand see this processor are designed for general purpose like our computer are having general purpose processor right so it is what programmed by user it is there with large size as we know our computer is there with large size our laptops are having large size right it is having large flexibility even we can have many programs inside our computer or processor but it is having less efficiency with respect to particular task, right? And it takes less time to the market. See, this is quite complex thing, but you can understand this as if you see my playlist of VLSI where I have explained how processors are having less time or higher time to the market. It is there with lower cost compared to application specific processor and it is having higher power consumption right and you will be observing there will be average performance for large application with general purpose processor and these processors are not suitable for real time applications now in general purpose processor First one is microprocessor and 
microprocessor is having a single chip which is having CPU. Remember this microprocessor is just a CPU which we have. I will show you in block diagram how to understand microprocessor. See it does not include RAM, ROM, input output ports. Right. It is only having a chip which is referred as CPU. Here there are some examples which I have written like Intel's 86 or Motorola's 680 series. Right. And right now in 2021 with Intel we are having Core i3, Core i5, Core i7, Core i9 processor which is available. And if you see the basic block diagram, then in microprocessor, you see we just have CPU, right? That is general purpose microprocessor. And with this CPU, we will be interfacing RAM, ROM, input output ports, timers, as well as we can interface serial communication port. So all these things that is interfaced via address line and data line with the CPU to perform particular task. So here we just have a single chip that is CPU and with the CPU we interface all these elements externally. Right. So in our computer you will be observing we interface RAM, ROM, many input output ports, serial communication ports externally with our main processor right so this is a basic example of microprocessor now i'll explain you what is microcontroller so microcontroller have ram rom input output ports timer and serial communication port in a single chip see in microprocessor we don't have all those things in a single chip right but it is having higher capability compared to microcontroller while microcontroller is having RAM, ROM, input output port, timers, serial communication port integrated in a single chip, but its capability is lower compared to microprocessor. It is also referred as MCU. For example, Intel's 808-8051, Motorola's MC68HC11. See, these are few examples which is there with microcontroller. There are many like Admega. I have also made a lecture series of AVR microcontroller. So that is also covered in this microcontroller section. If you see the block diagram, then CPU, RAM, ROM, input output port, timer and serial communication port. All these things are integrated in a single chip. So this is how basic block diagram is there with microcontroller. Now let us see embedded processor. See these are special microprocessor or microcontroller that one can say. And it has capabilities like it can have faster context switching. It is having atomic ALU operation. And risk score for fast and more precise also intensive calculation. So this embedded processor are having faster application execution compared to normal microcontroller and microprocessor. Here a few examples are given like ARM7, Intel i960, AMD29050, See, these are few examples which is there with embedded processor. Now, fourth category that is digital signal processor. In general purpose processor. See, we will be having a single chip of DSP and with that we will be interfacing many other units, right? It includes computation capabilities of microprocessor and multiply and accumulate units. So here with DSP chip, 
will be having microprocessor only but there are a few additional functions like multiply and accumulate unit which will be making operation of this processor faster for particular applications. There will be large number of applications which will be there with DSP processor like image processing, audio processing, video processing, telecommunication processes that is getting executed with faster operation with DSP processor. It is used in signal processing function. For example, TMS 320C series is there with DSP. Now, fifth general purpose processor is media processor. And it is designed to deal with digital streaming data in real time rates. So, for real time application, we will be using media processor. Mostly it is used in images and video processor. It is also considered as digital signal processor. For example, TM3270. Now, let us see second category that is application specific system processor. It is also referred as ASSP. It is dedicated to specific task. See, this application specific system processor that is designed for dedicated specific task, right? So it is dedicated to specific task. It provides faster solution to particular application. It is used in an additional processing unit. So when we have some specific task as additional unit, we use it with particular application. Like see, for example, right now I'm having one embedded system which is recognizing face, right? So there will be subsystem which will be having application specific system processor and that subsystem will be identifying that image and once it is getting identified by this subsystem that will be given to main system and main system will be something else, right? So additional unit that will be used with this particular processor. So it is having good performance with particular application as it is designed for specific tasks. For example, IIM 7100 and W3100A. These are the two different examples of this application specific system processor. Now, Next is application specific instruction processor. Now you see when we talk about ASIP, ASIP processor in that we have application specific instructions which is there with given processor. Here only difference is we are having instructions which can be used directly to execute particular task. So there are well defined instructions which will be doing some computational work and that will be resolving some applications very easily, right? So that is designed for particular applications only. There will be well-defined instructions for those applications. It is having very good flexibility and good performance and it will be having smaller silicon area for particular application, right? We don't use it for general purpose. We use it for well-defined application as it is having higher speed and good performance and it is there for particular application only, it will be having a lower cost and it will be consuming lower power as its silicon area is less. For example, embedded microcontroller, network processor and DSP processor, that is what example of application specific instruction processor. Now GPP core and ASIP core. You see GPP core means what? General purpose processor score and application specific instruction processor score. That is what we are integrating. And that we can integrate by application specific integrated circuit or very large scale integrated circuit. So these are the cores that we integrate in a circuit. So there can be multiple core 
E1, right? So if you have multi-core processor, in that case, your processing speed will get increased, right? But these are very costly processor, which is used for very high computational tasks. So this is all about different types of processor. I hope you have understood this. If you have any query, you just place that in comment. Definitely, I'll get back to you.